Hi, today we're going to show you how to install a Rottweiler intake system using this SMR KTM 990. Now, what you need to know is fundamentally all the air boxes underneath these fuel tanks are all identical. It's all the same part number. It's all the, pretty much the exact same procedure. So we're going to use this bike for video purposes. Um, but once we get the fuel tank off, it won't matter. Uh, you can follow the same instructions for any model. So we're not going to show you in the video exactly how to remove the tank because there's all the different bikes. That's the only part you need to figure out on your own. Uh, so we're going to start it with the fuel tank off. But um, once this is off, uh, all the installation is identical. So we hope this helps and uh, thanks for watching. Okay, here we are on this bike with the tank off. That's all we've done is remove the fuel tank. So this is what you're going to find your air box here. Uh, you got your SAS back here, uh, and this is where it draws fresh air from the uh, air box. We're going to need a pair of channel locks for this. Uh, this is a crankcase breather. We're going to need a same pair of channel locks for that. We're going to need a, a set of dikes right here. Actually, you don't need a set of dikes. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the air temperature sensor plug off. So we're going to put that aside. We're going to come in with a T20 and remove these screws. Now you're going to reuse these screws in the base plate of the Rottweiler intake system. So keep these screws. We're going to pull both these out and remove the temperature sensor. Okay, now using a pair of channel locks, we're going to remove the spring clamps from the crankcase breather here. We're going to pull this off and we're going to move the spring clamp on the SAS here. And we don't need to remove this yet. When we, when we pit up, pit, pivot up the lid, uh, we'll be able to pull it off uh, a lot easier. Okay, now we're going to remove the 12 screws on the air box. So there's eight on the lid here, and then there's four on the snorkel here. Uh, so we're going to go around one by one and just remove them all. And you don't keep these screws. And it's a six millimeter socket. Okay, now we've got all the bolts out of the lid, and we can pull the lid off first. And this will just come up if you've got all the screws out correctly. And now we're going to pull the SAS off the bottom. So you can just twist this guy uh, right there. So now you can discard the lid. You're not going to use anything uh, on here, uh, reuse anything on here again. So you can put that aside. And uh, now we're down to the filter element. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about this while we're here. If you want to reuse the SAS, which pretty much no one does, all you have to do is go buy a small k and filter that you can get at an automotive store uh, with a half inch um, hose. Uh, it's, this is a half inch ID hose, about uh, 12 millimeter. And you can just get a small cane in filter and put it on there. And that way you can uh, retain the SAS because this is where it pulls fresh air. Uh, if you're going to pull off the SAS, uh, we've got kits for that. We've got stage one, two, and three. Most common is two and three. Um, that'll pretty much take care of all the uh, emissions removal hardware. Uh, they have all the dongles and everything. You can look uh, elsewhere in the store for those pieces. Uh, and we'll go over that in this video as well. Okay, now we're going to pull the, uh, the intake trumpets out. So these just take, you can just kind of flat palm them like this and turn them counterclockwise. And those guys will pop out. If you're doing a 950, these turn clockwise to come out. Uh, so we're going to remove the stock air filter here. We're going to discard this. Obviously, this isn't going to get used again. Now moving forward, we're going to pull out the front snorkel. You're going to discard this. You're not going to use that anymore. Uh, in addition to that, you're also going to grab right here about where the cables are. There's a little rubber grommet. You can just grab that guy and pull him straight out. And that's what that looks like. So you're going to pull that out while you're there. Okay, moving forward to the left front portion of the uh, air box, you're going to find this little item right here. And what this is, is a check valve. And it only allows pressure out of the crankcase. And in case there's a backfire in the air box, it just won't allow anything to go back down. So what you want to do is find a, a small screwdriver with a thin blade. And you're going to want to wedge it in this band here and kind of unwind it. Um, these are permanent clamps. And if you get in there, you can pry that guy off and pull uh, the check valve out. And we're going to also want to do the same thing uh, with this other piece here. So again, you can kind of see it on camera. Work a screwdriver in there like that. You can pop it loose and it will come off uh, just like that. Okay, now we're going to come around to the back of the air box and we're going to remove the SAS valve uh, right here. So it's basically two bolts here and here and they're an eight millimeter socket. Okay, now that we've removed the two bolts, uh, the bracket is loose and we can start working on removing the lower portion of the stock air box. 
All right, moving over to the left-hand side of the bike, we're gonna remove this sensor right here. Uh, not completely, we're just gonna pull it off the tab uh, just to get out of the way for now. Uh, we're gonna put that back, we're not modifying this at all. But what we're trying to do is remove these three screws from this door right here so we can access the lower band clamps on the throttle bodies. Okay, now that we've removed the triangular door in the left-hand side of the airbox, what we're looking for are the two lower band clamps on the bottom of the throttle bodies. You can see two sets of them on the rear and then two sets of them on the front. You don't want to loosen the top ones. Uh, we've seen people loosen both of them and then take the boots off. There's no reason to do that. Uh, and some people have flipped them over backwards by accident, uh, which causes air leaks. So uh, just leave the top ones on and only get in and loosen uh, the bottom band clamps. And you can watch them, make sure you don't take the bolt out so far. Uh, that they that they come out of the nut. Okay, next we're going to locate the spring clamp that is on the fuel line, which is this right here. You can see it through the left-hand uh, triangular window that we just removed from the airbox. And what I like to do is come in from the top with a set of needle nose right here. Now you you're going to want to be careful. There is a little bit of residual fuel pressure in this line, so it will squirt when it comes off, and you'll probably see it here in a second. So we're going to work this guy off right here, and now watch the fuel line. You, hear that? you see the fuel right there? So just watch your eyes when you do that, and you're going to want to just take that line off just like that. So now the fuel line is off. Okay, now we're going to locate on the left-hand side of the bike this clear hose right here, and this is just a drain hose for the stock airbox. You're not going to need this anymore, so you can just pull that right out. Okay, moving to the right-hand side of the bike, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to remove these three screws from the side of the stock airbox. Uh, and again, we're not going to reuse these. It's a six millimeter socket uh, that'll take them out and all these get discarded. Okay, next we're gonna focus our attention right here on the main uh, fuel injector plug. Okay, right up here, this is the main plug for just the fuel injection that's uh, hanging on the uh, throttle bodies right over here. So. Uh, we're going to have to fish this plug through the hole when we remove the lower end of the airbox. So what we're going to do um, is press this little tang right here, which will allow it to come off the frame. Now, these are in various spots on different bikes, but they're all pretty much on the right-hand side of the bike that we found. So, uh, again, there's a little uh, depression right here. You can press that. It'll pop off. And then what we're going to want to do is press this and pull this guy apart, just like that. And now we're going to fish this one back through the hole. Okay, now we're ready to remove the lower portion of the airbox out of the frame. Uh, just to recap, uh, we've removed the two bolts off the bracket of the SAS. We've taken the windows off of either side of the airbox. We have loosened only the lower band clamps on the throttle bodies, removed the uh, fuel line from this side. We've unplugged the main plug from the harness right here so we can fish that through. Uh, we've taken the sensor off the lid and we're going to put that out the side here. And then we've removed the little rubber grommet on the throttle uh, cables up in front. So now what we're going to do is we're going to rock the throttle bodies a little bit off to the side. And they'll pop off of the cylinder heads. Now we're ready to pull this out. And you'll encounter a little bit of resistance. And that's basically the main uh, uh, connector right here. So once we've lifted up on this lower portion of the airbox, this will be able to come through. So uh, we've got the, uh, the fuel line down here. We're going to want to grab a set of pliers and remove the spring clamp off the fuel line. So we can do that right now, and the reason for that is so the fuel line can uh, go through the lower uh, rubber grommet in the air box that seals it. Uh, so we're going to remove that right there, and that will, again, that'll splash some fuel. So now that we remove that, you can kind of push the fuel line down and push it through. And we're going to grab the lower portion of the airbox and just pull up like this. And kind of in one motion, you're going to want to get the airbox to a point where you can get this plug through the side. And now we can remove this part of it. So that's out. You can throw that on the floor. And what you're going to have left over are two of these little kind of rubber grommets right here. You also discard these. These do not go on with the kit. And so these are pulled off. Now at the same time, you can put the throttle bodies back down on the cylinder heads. And as long as the band clamps have stayed where they're supposed to be, 
uh, you can push that right back down and they will pop right into place just like that. You're going to want to wiggle them back and forth and they'll register. It will look like they're not seated because of the machining down on the cylinder heads. Don't worry about that. As long as they push down and they register, you'll feel them. Uh, you're good. And now you can tighten the lower band clamps. Okay, we've moved back over to the left-hand side of the bike. And now what we're going to do is retighten the lower band clamps that we loosened to get the uh, lower portion of the airbox off. And now we're just going to retighten those. Now we're going to work on the fuel line. Okay, now we're going to get the fuel line on, and I prefer to load the spring clamps on a pair of pliers like this and come in from the back side of the uh, throttle actuation arms. Get it over the fuel line first, the steel part, just like this. And then we're going to get the fuel line on, and then we're going to drop that over the top of it, just like that, and then release it. Okay, now that we have the fuel line on and the band clamps tightened, we can take this sensor here and put it back uh, where it originally came from. And again, we only remove this for uh, video purposes and to help us access the bolts in the side door. So we can just put that back where it originally lived. Okay, moving to the rear cylinder on the left-hand side, we're gonna begin removing the SAS system. If you wanna retain it, uh, you can skip forward in this video now to uh, the rest of the intake install, but uh, most people remove this when they do our intake. So we're gonna show you how to do that now. Uh, and you're gonna begin by removing these two bolts uh, in the side of the cylinder here, the cylinder head. And then you're going to replace this with our SAS plates here. And so you're going to leave this little check valve there. Uh, that's, your, that's your gasket that seals it off. So we're going to get these two bolts started. And tighten those down. Okay, now we're on the right-hand side of the engine, and we're going to do the same thing over here. Now, on many bikes, uh, it's actually uh, it's a bit difficult to get uh, this out of here because there's an oil tank that wraps around that gets in your way. So, uh, on the uh, Adventure and uh, and the bikes where um, the oil tank is wrapped around the front cylinder, you're going to want to take the bolts out of the oil tank. Uh, and the two top bolts out of the radiator. You can leave the radiator bolted to the oil tank and push everything forward. And when you push it forward, it will expose this. Um, there's, a little, there's a little bit of a tube in front of it that you have to wedge your socket by. Um, uh, but that's basically how you do it on those vehicles. On the SM uh, vehicles, uh, it's extremely easy because the oil tank is, uh, is down low. So we're going to show you how to do uh, this side on this bike right here. Okay, once the screws are out, you can just pop this door off and start uh, pushing it through uh, the frame here. At this time, we're going to put the second SAS plate on the front cylinder. And it's always a good idea uh, to start these bolts by hand, um, especially this lower one here. Uh, on some of the other bikes, like I explained, it's a little bit tough, and that one uh, down here can be easy to cross thread. So start them by hand so you know you have a good purchase on the threads and then you can get it tightened up. Okay, now that you've removed the two SAS, uh, the stock SAS plates from the sides of the cylinders, uh, you're ready to find the plug. And we have uh, in our SAS stage two and three uh, kits, we have the uh, uh, dongle plugs that plug in that uh, stop your FI light from coming on when you remove uh, the valve. Uh, you'll still get uh, FI lights for actual uh, reasons uh, in case there's uh, another problem on the bike, but it'll just stop the FI light for coming on uh, just for this. So you're going to want to take a pair of uh, dikes and cut this zip tie here uh, if there is in fact a zip tie on it. Then you're going to want to lift up on this tab and pull this out right here. Then you're going to want to locate our SAS dongle, which is this right here, and plug that in and then just re-zip tie this to the frame. And that's all you have to do for that. And that fools the ECU into thinking that uh, the SAS valve uh, is still there. It gives it the proper resistance. So now we're going to remove the SAS system completely from the bike. So we've taken all the plates off and uh, we're going to fish it up through the frame here. Um, some of these, if you don't plan on using them again, uh, you can just cut the tubes and pull them through. If you think you may need it again, uh, depending on your location, um, you can just keep it 
together and there is the entire SAS removed right there. It's that simple. So it's basically removing these two plates off the cylinders, putting our plates on, uh, the Rottweiler SAS plates, uh, block off plates on, and then putting the Rottweiler uh, SAS uh, canceller dongle right here. Okay, now we've located the base plate for the uh, uh, Rottweiler intake system and the inside of the filter uh, will be this side right here and the underside of the base plate uh, will be like this. So these ears uh, should sit like this. This would be the top side, the inside of the filter, and they would point to the right hand side of the bike like this. So right now we're going to insert the air temperature sensor right here. Now on the 950 bikes you won't find this, so they won't have a provision for this, uh, but on the 990s, the fuel injection, they need this sensor. So we're going to reinsert that in this hole right here. Uh, and these are self-tapping screws, so what we're going to want to do is make sure that the little tab on the air temperature sensor right here is facing uh, this direction towards the short end of the plate, like this. And that just makes it easier to get the plug on and off. So we're going to load those screws in and use our T20 Torx, and those will self-tap right into the base plate. Okay, now that the air temperature sensor is in and tight, we're going to work on the check valve part. So what we're going to do is split this check valve in half and reinsert it in this hole. Now, you're going to want to pay attention to the original direction in which this thing came out of the bike. And one way to tell is, is one half of this has two little serrations on it. And those serrations mean the flow is this direction, which means from the crankcase uh, into the filter system. And so uh, what we're going to do is split this in half and reinsert it in this hole. And the side with the serrations should be on the inside of the filter, which is uh, this side right here, uh, the same side that the uh, air temperature sensor is pointing. So I've already pre-loosened this. You can either use two three-quarters, two 19 millimeters, or a combination of the two and split that apart. And when you pull it apart, there is two pieces in here. There is a little plastic ball and there is a spring. Uh, and if it's nice enough to hold the spring for you, what you can do is split it apart just like this and you can reassemble it. So the part with the ball goes on the bottom and it goes and it fits right inside this hole like that. Then the part with the spring uh, should be, uh, the triangular part of the spring or the smaller part of the spring should be facing against the ball. And again, this is the one with the serrations in it. And so it goes back together this way in the base plate. And what you're going to want to do is thread these back together in the base plate, just like this. And it's going to sandwich the two. Then you can use those two 19 millimeter wrenches or three quarter wrenches or both to tighten them in the base plate, just like that. So remember the side with the symbol is the side with the serrations. And you want to be able to blow through this direction. So this would be the bottom. Okay, now we're at the left-hand side of the bike and we've located the crankcase vent hose right here. And what we want to do is pull it through and reroute it up in between uh, the throttle bodies. So it no longer goes up and over the top of the airbox. It comes in through the bottom. So what we're going to do is pull it through the frame like this. Not very difficult. And then we want to change directions and push it up through the frame underneath the water line here. Now you can see it coming through the top between the two throttle bodies and you want to kind of help it through. Uh, hopefully we can get to the best view we can. And the only thing you want to be careful of when you're doing this is not to knock off the uh, exciter wire from the starter which, is, which has a little green sleeve on it. So keep an eye on that and we've just rerouted uh, the tube and we want it to come up on the right hand side of the throttle bodies and go between them on the bottom. Okay, now that we have the crankcase breather hose up on the uh, right hand side of the bike, we're going to want to tuck it in behind this wiring. Now there might be a zip tie in here that you might want to just remove. And then you're going to want to bring the crankcase breather hose right up on the inside like that. And then you're going to want to trim about 35 millimeters, uh, just a little under an inch and a half off the length of this. So if you look at it and measure down from the top, You want to cut just a little piece off like that, about 35 millimeters. And the reason is, is that you want this tube flush to the bottom of the base plate where we just put on the check valve. So this is going to go onto the check valve with a, uh, a spring clamp that we provided in the kit. Okay, now we're ready to put our base plate on. So what we're going to do is first we're going to load the X-rings on the throttle body. So we're going to do the front cylinder first, then the rear. 
Then what we're going to do is locate the temperature sensor plug and we're going to plug that in ahead of time and make sure that the wire goes to the right hand side of the uh, throttle cables here and you may want to zip tie, once this is on you may want to zip tie this this wire to the cable so it doesn't interfere with anything and then when you're ready what you're going to want to do is hook the right hand side underneath and pull it over and then you'll see these two reliefs right here and the plate will pop down and we've got X rings on here that seal on four sides so it's the it's a really really good sealing uh, now we're going to find the velocity stacks and the velocity stacks these are the stock ones and they're going to lock the base plate down so we're going to start again with the front and you should twist and you'll hear a click and then we'll go to the rear and again you're going to want to make sure the tangs push down underneath and they'll twist and then you'll hear a click. Now your base plate is locked down and we're ready to secure the crankcase breather hose to the check valve. Okay, now we're going to put the crankcase vent hose onto the check valve that we mounted in the Rottweiler base plate. We're going to want to get behind the wiring loom like this and put it onto the check valve like that. Now it's a little bit tough to see in the video, but what you're going to want to do is mount this spring, put the spring over the check valve first. It's a little tough to see, but if you put it over at first and you put the hose up into it, uh, you can see the spring is on there uh, at that point. So open up the spring, put the hose through the spring up onto the check valve, and you can release the spring and that'll hold the, uh, the hose on there. And this hose just goes right behind these wires. Uh, it doesn't affect anything at all. Uh, there's one little zip tie here you might want to cut uh, to pull the, uh, the wires apart so the, the, the crankcase breather hose can go up into the base plate. At this time we can reconnect the fuel injection plug and mount it back to the frame. Okay, now we're ready to mount the filter itself. There's two different kinds of filters that come in our kits. A flat sided like this and we also have some dome filters. Uh, that look like this one and the reason we designed it that way is on some models like the SE 950 uh, and the RC8 uh, There is a low uh, fuel tank clearance and seat pan clearance on these so you get a little bit more clearance with this radius here So for this model, uh, we're going to use the flat sided filter and I haven't oiled these so I can handle them for the video purposes We have another video on how to oil them. So what you're looking to do is You want to find this tab right here and this goes on the left hand side and you want to clip it underneath the base plate and there's a tab on the base plate here and the way you do that is you get it centered over the base plate and tilt it a little bit to the left and then drop it down and pull it to the right and you'll feel the black tab on the base plate slide in between the foam and the orange tab on the filter itself and you'll know because you'll be able to rock it and it won't come up so we've got that clipped underneath and centered now what we're going to do is we're going to pinch the black ears on the base plate up into the recesses of the orange ears on the filter itself. So we're going to pull that forward and you, you just heard both of those uh, clip in and while we're holding the front we're going to work with our right hand and we're going to clip that one in there. Then we're going to come here and we're going to pull them and again you're going to want to pull them together. Uh, sometimes uh, they want to fight you a little bit like that so you can just kind of move the air filter over and pull them in and then once that's in properly that'll clip there and you can fold the D-rings down and your filter is mounted and the way you can check is you just you can go up around the perimeter and the base and pull up on it and if it pulls up from the left uh, like this uh, then you didn't clip it properly if it if it's in there securely you know you've got a good tight seal and uh, your air filter is mounted properly well that's pretty much it for the installation of the Rottweiler intake system I hope this was uh, easier than you thought it was going to be that's the reason we did this video uh, one thing we didn't cover is how to oil the filter uh, we've got another video on that it's really very simple but uh, uh, we just wanted to show you how to get everything installed and an average mechanic with an average set of tools can really do this in anywhere between one and three hours it's not difficult at all so um, again thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video